this thing's gonna go, oh, hey, let's, uh, let's separate these batteries because we don't wanna run this one down, but we'll continue to let you use this one for your accessory power. I'm gonna do a lot of hand gestures. Five days ago, I had a dead battery in my Jeep Wrangler JK. That's overclocked for those of you who have been following my channel. Five days ago, uh, dead battery, like cell went bad. I explained a little bit about how I determined that in that video. Bad cell, done, had to get a new battery, uh, and you guys sold that process. I ended up with a diehard AGM battery. But in that very video where I talked about the fact that I need a new battery, I also mentioned, man, I would love to go dual batteries. I just can't justify it, I can't afford it, so it's not gonna happen. I didn't have time to do it, and that's still true. Uh, whether or not I can afford it still yet to be determined. But what you see here on the table is uh, a dual battery setup, yes, from Genesis Off-Road. So as you can tell, uh, you gotta be simper gumby with me. You gotta be flexible because I'm always going to change things up on you when you're not paying attention. So I just put in a brand new battery, single battery install. Would love to do dual batteries, but can't afford it. And now here I am five days later, dual battery kit sitting on the table in front of me. Why? Well, to be honest with you, I started trying to diagnose and dissect my battery needs situation, my battery consumption, uh, where I'm drawing power and why, and, uh, and also why I have a premature battery failure, right? To have a, have a cell go bad in a battery that's only two and a half years old, well, that's uh, a little bit premature. So um, anyway, part of that is the downside of a lead acid battery. Um, an AGM battery should be able to handle the discharge, recharge, discharge cycle that I tend to do to those. But really when I start diagnosing my battery consumption, uh, I start realizing that I really do put a big demand on a single battery, particularly with my dash camera that's always running 24 by seven. And so I started thinking, how do I limit the load that I'm putting on my main vehicle battery uh, by draining it constantly and then recharging it. And so I started looking at battery packs specific for my dash camera. Now they do make them. Uh, and uh, they're basically lithium ion batteries uh, that you plug in, it's hardwired, the batteries will charge up when the vehicle's running and when the vehicle's turned off, the camera works off of that battery exclusively and doesn't pull from your main battery. But what am I doing? I'm adding a second battery into my system anyway. Worse, I'm adding a battery that's prone to not like heat and cold. Even worse, that battery pack's like 300 bucks anyway. So I'm like, well, if I'm gonna spend that much money, why wouldn't I just go add a dual battery system, put two usable 12 volt batteries in the Jeep that can handle a lot more and, and power a lot more than that little lithium ion battery can, that I'm not just using it for my dash cam, I'm using it for everything, everything I do with my vehicle, winching, accessory lighting, CB radio, stereo, like all that stuff, uh, it can now be used for that. So that's what I did. I mean, the Genesis kit gets me in a position where I can install two batteries and through a very smart way sort of manage those batteries for me. So that's what I did. So I ditched the whole idea of adding another battery into the system that can't do anything else but run my dash camera and, uh, and went with Genesis Off-Road. So let me show you a little bit about this because this is a fascinating little kit, very well put together. Uh, the guy that, that uh, runs Genesis Off-Road that founded that company is a Jeeper himself and was looking for dual battery solutions that were sort of plug and play and that's what we've got here. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, you can go out and build a similar system. You can go find parts, source different battery trays, you can go source this Colehurst isolator yourself and build a kit, but what I can tell you is, is I did the math on that and you actually don't save any money. Actually, I think you probably spend more money by trying to source it yourself and then you've gotta build it. So um, it turns out after all of that research I did, just going and getting the Genesis Off-Road kit comes with a very nice dual battery tray and a very nice top plate uh, was the way to go. And he adds in some other niceties here that I wouldn't have probably done on my own. I would have skipped those steps. And to be honest with you, I think this is the best 
dual battery system for Jeep. All right, so here is the, uh, the system. Now, one of the things that I had to uh, call them about and I'm fairly confident it's gonna work is I do have a rugged ridge snorkel system and this should work just fine with that. So you've got an aftermarket intake. Uh, this should still work uh, nicely for you. Uh, so it's got the, uh, the single piece steel battery tray and then it's got this nice top plate that acts as a hold down for the batteries but also contains all of your electronics. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Cole Hersey isolator. I went with the upgrade. It comes with either an 85 amp or you can pay for an upgraded 200 amp isolator. Most people will probably be fine with an 85 amp, but the reality of it is it's just a little bit more money to upgrade to the 200 amp. Then you sort of future proof yourself if you do uh, upgrades to the alternator or, or what have you. But I would suggest probably if you can swing the extra few bucks just to upgrade to the 200 like I did. So your batteries are gonna fit in like this. If you consider that you're where the engine would be, uh, and this would be like the, the outside of the vehicle back here, uh, a battery normally would sit just like this. You'd have your positive post here and your negative post here. JK batteries stock are group 34R. It's kind of a reversed instead of the positive normally being over here, uh, Jeeps are backwards and the positives over there. So uh, with that said, this will take two group 34 batteries, but not the standard Jeep like reversed post battery. It takes the normal group 34 batteries. That's a problem uh, if you're in a position like me where I just bought a brand new diehard battery. Uh, I can't just buy another one of those and put it in here because of where the posts end up lining up, it's not gonna work. So uh, it's good to plan ahead if you're gonna buy batteries and get this system, do it at the same time, or at least uh, do it knowing you're gonna, you're gonna do one or the other. That way you can get the right batteries that you need. Again, group 34s is what you need, which is a fairly standard battery but Jeep just for some reason likes to use that reverse post uh, schema. So this takes that into account by giving you positive where your positive post would be and a negative where your negative post would be. So then you're uh, connecting the two batteries. The negative is going to the negative over here. The positive is going into this isolator stuff here, which I'll show you a little bit more detail about and then over to the vehicle. All right, so he's also added these power bus bars uh, and this uh, positive bar has a nice little cap for it. Um, and then there's a negative bar right here. So this allows you to attach accessory items that need 12 volt power uh, to this system. So it's got these uh, screws around the perimeter for low amperage uh, needs. But if you have high amp uh, accessories like winches and things like that, you can use this huge center post. And then uh, same sort of a setup here for the ground. So that's a nice feature. So if you need a place to connect uh, accessories, uh, then this would be a really neat option. This is a cool thing, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about how this works here in a second, but if you drain your starting battery, you can actually press this boost button once, and it will connect the two batteries, and basically it will let you use your accessory battery to jumpstart your vehicle. Uh, so that's a really cool feature. You basically have a built-in jumpstart between the two, because remember, with this smart isolator, it's gonna separate the batteries uh, depending on the charge state. So let's talk about that now. All right, I'm gonna try and explain how this works without batteries in here. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot of hand gestures, you know, as if I uh, can convey to you the fact that batteries are here and power is moving. But basically how this is gonna work is you have two batteries in here, and if they're both fully charged, they're both gonna be connected. So you're basically gonna get extended battery life because you're pulling from two different batteries. Now, once your main starting battery gets to 12.7 volts for one minute, uh, then it's going to isolate. This thing's gonna go, oh, hey, let's, uh, let's separate these batteries because we don't wanna run this one down, but we'll continue to let you use this one for your accessory power. And so what's gonna happen is uh, it's going to continue to allow you to have access to one of the batteries but not your main starting battery. You're trying to protect that from being run down. So then you get in and you start your vehicle and what's, what's gonna happen next? Well, your little light's gonna come on to say, hey, by the way, these guys are not connected. So your status light will tell you that these are separated because of the charge level. So it's gonna charge your main battery first. So your alternator's not gonna see a difference. It's charging one battery at a time. 
It's gonna charge your main battery first. Once that battery gets up to 13.3 volts for two minutes, which means it's basically sure it wasn't just a spike in voltage that's actually fully charged because it's holding there, then it will reconnect the batteries and then begin charging the second battery. So then that battery will charge all the way up and then you're back to where you were. So that's how it works. Both batteries are connected. Both batteries will drain until your main battery gets to 12.7 volts. They will disconnect. Then you'll be draining off of your accessory battery as far as you need to go until you, know, you end up starting the vehicle again. And then it will start charging this battery, reconnect them, and then charge up the other battery to match. So that's how that works. Uh, hopefully that made sense. It really is a great thing. And by the way, remember, uh, you've got this sort of uh, boost button that if for any reason your main battery's dead, you can just, just boost it and it will take advantage of your accessory battery and the voltage in that to help you get that starter turning. So, so anyway, guys, that's it. I just wanted to show you this Genesis off-road uh, dual battery kit um, because I didn't think I was gonna do it. And then uh, when I decided that I, I wanted to do something, I tried to figure out all the ways to do it on my own, sort of a DIY style. And this ended up just being a better option. So this is going in, I've got batteries uh, to deal with. Um, so when those arrive, I'll, uh, I'll give you the hookup on what's going on there. Did make some changes on that, obviously, because I can't just put that die hard I just bought uh, into this setup. So um, yeah, life's a compromise and be prepared for change. So that's the rule of the day. Anyway, that's it. The Genesis Off-Road JK Dual Battery Kit is going into overclocked soon. I will show you the details, um, but he's got an amazing how-to on his website. Uh, you can go find it on YouTube. Uh, the Genesis Off-Road main video, that the install video, is is amazing so i'm going to use that as a guide to install it but i will talk about the things that i run into such as my uh aftermarket uh intake system and how i have my winch connected i'm gonna have to figure out how to how to resolve that maybe some other little things that i'll make sure that i share with you uh, as i get into the process but that's it guys thanks for watching i'll catch you on the next one